I'm Simon Roberts. I'm from Pontypridd in South Wales. I run for Team Montaigne and I'm a defending champion of the Dragon's Back race. Uh, last year, history was made. I was the first Welshman to win the race. Got the opportunity to make more history this time, so I could become the, uh, the first two-time overall winner. So that'd be, a, that'd be a nice thing to get as well. You know, you've got the race inside of this race. You've also got the, the camp life side of this race as well. I've made loads of great friends from the Dragon's Back. I first met Gary House in the 2019 race. Yeah, I'm Gary House. I am based in North Wales, born and bred in North Wales. Yeah, when I ran the race back in 2019, I went into it looking at it as a bit of an adventure, really. Um, didn't really know what to expect. I was quite relaxed around the campsite, like Sial knows. The odd day he was waiting to run with me and I just wasn't ready, so I was one of the last out of the camp nearly every day. Uh, so yeah, I'm looking to just push myself as hard as I can this time rather than just take it more as a relaxed week away, yeah. Um, big do's or don'ts for food. I would say the big do is the training with the food. You need to be training with the food that you're going to eat for quite a, for a number of months before the race. I mean, we're four weeks out from the race now. If you're starting to experiment with food now, I would say you've left it a bit too late because um, that food, it, it may not agree with you on race day. You need to train your gut. So you, you get these to be used to the food that you're going to eat. Yeah, my feeling strategy is pretty straightforward these days. I've been doing these races and mountain races for well over 10 years. So I've made all the mistakes, I've made my mistakes. Now it's more down to the kind of what can keep me taking that carbohydrate on. So I'll have little tricks like I have ginger based drinks and I'll have in these longer races, I might have some nut butters and stuff like this, just to have a different flavour, different texture. I think you've got to not treat it as a one day race and you're fueling for the next day. So stuff like flavour fatigue will, will come in at some point. So I will always have something salty, some bit of kind of, some bit of fat in my, uh, in my bag ready for emergencies, yeah. My f favourite part of the route for me is the obvious answer is day one. I think it's everyone's favourite. It's just absolute jaw-dropping scenery on a clear day as well on Kribgoch. Even though I'm not looking at the scenery, I am concentrating on not falling off. But you, yeah, you get a glimpse now and then. It's just stunning scenery, really sharp edge, scary stuff, big climbs. Um, you've, got the, you've got the scramble up Trivan, and then you've got the scramble across Kribgoch. Yeah, br brilliant running. Um, so that, that is that, that is the highlight, I think. Yeah, my big deep motivation sometimes changes. I've been lucky enough to be in races where I'm challenging, say, yeah, whether towards the top, and then that's that should be motivation enough. But sometimes, if it's just about completion, like in 2019, it was never in doubt because I knew that my family were travelling from North Wales to South Wales to see me on the final day. So that was my big, deep motivation. They were there at the finish line waiting for me. So you can have different motivations, I think, for different periods in the race, different times. And I think it's just handy knowing them before you start. Essential and favorite bits of Montaigne kit, definitely for the Dragon's Back. Number one would be the waterproof. I need to trust that jacket in the mountains and I also want it to be light so that I can move well and I do that do with the, uh, the Montaigne jackets. Then the second piece of equipment would be the bag. I love the gecko bags, and because I definitely know that I can fit everything in, but it's not gonna move around, it doesn't bounce around, it doesn't rub me anywhere. And again, it's just really durable in the hills. Third piece of kit is nice and simple, the shorts. Um, I like them because they're light, they feel fast, and again, move really well over in the mountains, but they're really simple. Yeah, my tips for recovering for the next day in the, in the Dragon's Back, mainly are when you're finished, it can be quite easy just to lie down or chat with friends and kind of just mill around the camp for a little bit. But it's really important that, yeah, you, I, for me, I want to set up my 
bed space as soon as possible so that I know that it's ready so I don't have to do that later and while I'm doing that I'll probably be trying to drink some water and get some quick bits of food in and although being around the camp is great fun and you'll meet lots of great people and talk about the stories of the day it's important that you do get that sleep. There's lots of other mountain races that might claim that they're one of the world's toughest but this one can genuinely say it's one of the world's toughest because the terrain, like I say, the long days and just managing yourself around camp. We're all there to push ourselves, we're all there to challenge ourselves and if you go away thinking that it wasn't the toughest race then you've probably <laughs> not done it justice. I think last year as well there was a, there was a less than 50% finish rate as well so I think they can now call it one of the hardest mountain races in the world.